what's very clear from our uh, survey is what the public wants, and they say this year in, year out, is more honesty from politicians. It's not just about what you say, they want to see it backed up with real evidence and a sense that actually their life and their future and their prospects are, are improving. Uh, in terms of business, it's a pretty clear picture. Show that you're planning for the long term. Um, don't, it's not about maximising short term profits, it's about investing in education, in training, uh, job creation. And for CEOs, it's a very clear picture. Be brave, get out there, defend your company. Don't defend the indefensible and do your bit. Help improve the common good. Most people in the lowest quartile feel that they are going to be worse off in the next five years. And most people in the top feel they're going to be better off in the next five years. It's a fundamentally different view of the world. What it's replaced by is a deep sense of irritation that income inequality is getting worse. I have as much information as they do, and my information is probably better than theirs because it's coming from my peers. I don't trust information I get from government, and I don't trust it, God knows, from CEOs. If you fail to deliver on your promises, if you undermine the champions of compassion, then you get the trust gap. I can't remember who it was who said that um, a foreign policy born in the minds of the few and carried in the hearts of none is doomed to fail. But it's a great notion which doesn't just apply to foreign policy. A domestic policy that is born in the hearts of the few and carried in the hearts of none is also doomed to fail. The recipe for any problem that gets, any big problem that I've seen solved is government leadership. Anyone tells you that they can solve the problem without government leadership I think is misleading. Governments do need to lead, that's what they're elected to do. But they, get, they can't do it on their own. Government leadership has to be allied to business innovation. And I'd extend that and I'd say organisational innovation because I think NGOs can innovate strongly. Leaders have to be seen to be taking views on the big issues and acting responsibly and making sure the companies do that as well. I thought what was really interesting was the, the research you've done which shows the sort of the growing gap in trust, in politicians especially, between the elite and people on lower incomes. I thought that was really interesting in the context of what David Miliband was saying there. He was talking about this civilian surge, the idea that people were coming in behind populist uh, politicians of the extreme left and right, whether it's Donald Trump in America or whether it's Jeremy Corbyn in this country. Whatever businesses do, whether it's, you know, sort of small or large, it's got to be authentic and not tokenistic because the public sniff that out very quickly if it's kind of, it's just a fig leaf. Um, if they're doing something really substantial, it doesn't have to be huge, but it be, can be significant. Um, then they need to talk about it and communicate it authentically, because otherwise, you know, that trust, that key element of trust is lost. Just to remind everyone in the room that trust does really matter. If you are a trusted business, people are much more likely to buy your products and services. They are more likely to recommend you and be an advocate for you and they're even more likely to actually pay more for products versus other companies. And if you're an institution, it's the difference between having public support or not having public support. So it really does matter.